Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about how to code ICD-10 CM diagnoses for the skin, subcutaneous tissue, and musculoskeletal system. So as we've learned, the coding manual is broken down into chapters. So coding the skin is from chapter 12 and will be coding categories L00 to L99 and coding musculoskeletal conditions is from chapter 13 and that belongs to the coding category M00 to M99, which means any of our codes that are for skin or subcutaneous conditions or diseases will start with an L and any of our codes that are for musculoskeletal diseases or conditions will start with an M. I just wanted to be sure that everyone was fully aware of a few conditions that are common. The first one is cellulitis. So if you see cellulitis, just remember that is an infection of the skin and soft tissue resulting from some sort of break in the skin. Next is osteoarthritis. If you ever see the abbreviation OA, that's for osteoarthritis. And this is actually a type of degenerative joint disease, and it's the most common form of arthritis. And then finally, a pathological fracture. And we'll talk about this in a little bit. But a pathological fracture is a fracture that occurs in a weakened bone by a disease. So the, the bone is already weak from this underlying disease. So I wanted to talk about the coding guidelines that are specific for pressure ulcer stages. It's very important as a coder that you're aware of these. So I took these directly from the official coding guidelines, chapter 12, uh, section A. So our first one tells us that codes from category L89, which is the pressure ulcer codes, identify the site of the pressure ulcer as well as the stage. So remember our documentation tells us the stage and the site. The stages are either stage one, two, three, or four. We can also do an unspecified stage or unstageable. And remember, we use our clinical documentation to identify the stage. We, the coder, cannot identify the stage. We look at the documentation. So when we're coding unstageable, what does that mean? Well, that is when the clinician has specifically said that the stage is not clinically determined. That's the only time we would code that. And then there's a coding guideline that deals with healing or healed pressure ulcers. So the first one tells us that for ulcers that were present on admission but healed at the time of discharge, we assign the code for the site and stage of the pressure ulcer at the time of admission. And then if the pressure ulcer was completely healed, so it had healed even at admission, then we don't assign a code for that. If it's completely healed, we didn't treat it, so we're not coding it. And then if the pressure ulcer evolved, so got worse or got better during admission, then we're coding that. So if a patient is admitted with a pressure ulcer at one stage, and it progresses to a higher stage, both stages are needed. So we code each. We code the site stage upon admission, and then we have a second code for the, the highest stage that that ulcer was documented during the patient's stay as well. Now, the musculoskeletal coding guidelines. Again, our codes within this section are M00 to M99, and most of the codes in here have what we call site and laterality designation. So that means that the site is the bone, the joint, the muscle, and the laterality is which side of the body. Is it the left side? Is it the right side? Is it bilateral? So make sure and pay attention to that when you're coding. Again, the documentation is going to derive your code. You just need to make sure that you're picking the most specific code to match your documentation. 
So we have acute or chronic conditions in this section. So any bone, joint, muscle conditions that are a result of a healed injury or that are chronic or recurrent, we code in chapter 13, the musculoskeletal chapter. But if it's an acute injury, so an acute fracture, then it's in chapter 19. So it's not going to start with an M if it's an acute. So one chronic non-acute type of injury is a pathological fracture. These will be categorized to our chapter 13 M codes, and these have seventh characters on them. So make sure and read the character choices. A, of course, is used for active treatment. So even if it's not the first time the patient's being seen, but the care for that pathological fracture is still active, the, the injury has not completely healed, then we're using the seventh character A. We use D for after active healing. So if the fracture has healed, but we're still seeing the patient, there's still follow-up, then the seventh character D would be the appropriate one. And when we're coding osteoarthritis, we don't have to pick a site. That's not even part of the code because osteoarthritis is systemic, which means all bones are going to be impacted. So with fractures, we also have stress fractures. So a stress fracture is different from a pathological fracture. Stress fractures are due from repetitive force, like let's say an athlete, maybe a gymnast, who's completely you know, jumping on something over and over, jumping off the beam, jumping off the bar, and landing abruptly over and over might get a stress fracture in one of his or her legs, where a pathological fracture is due to an underlying condition that has weakened the bone, like osteoporosis or cancer. So when we're coding stress fractures, these are coded in the musculoskeletal chapter, so the M codes, it would be categorized to M84, but we also need to code an external cause of morbidity to show how that injury happened how that stress fracture happened. Was it from walking, repetitive motion? What was that motion? So for example, Y9301 would be activities such as walking, mar marching, or hiking. Okay, now I just have a couple practice cases. Our first one, we have a 56-year-old admitted today with type 2 diabetes mellitus with acute osteomyelitis of her right tibia and fibula. So I'll give you a minute and then let's see what codes you come up with. Okay, hey, hopefully you guys have both codes. We first would, co would code the diabetes mellitus, which is the E11.69, and we're gonna code it with the osteomyelitis. And then we're gonna code the osteomyelitis of the tib and fib, which is M86.161. So again, both codes are needed, and the diabetic code is put first. Let's go to our second practice case. This one, we have a 76-year-old nursing home patient who was transferred from Sunnyside Nursing Home with a pressure ulcer that is getting deep, deeper in her sacral area. The physician admitted her and started treatment. Her diagnosis is stage three sacral pressure ulcer with gangrene. Again, I'll give you a minute and then we'll go over the answers.
Okay, so hopefully you guys have both codes, I-96 for the gangrene and L89.153 for the pressure ulcer. Now, if you weren't sure which code to put first, on this one, when we go to ulcer, if you open up your index, let me walk through this with you. So if you go to ulcer, and we're gonna go to pressure, and then we're gonna go to stage three, and down to sacral, it gives us L89.15. So then we're gonna to flip to the tabular to L89.15. And this is where we put our stage, right? So we pick three, or stage three, that's where L89.153 comes. Now remember, you always flip to the beginning of a category and read any specific inclusion notes, exclusion notes, all of our guidelines specific to that code. So if we go to the beginning of our category, which is code L89, right, that's our category, the first three characters of your code is your category. It tells us code first, any associated gangrene, I-96. So that's how you know that your gangrene goes first is because this coding note right here tells us to do so. So I hope you guys got that correct. And I hope you enjoyed learning how to code sign symptoms and musculoskeletal conditions.